Section 17 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aeneid of Virgil. Translated by John Trydon. Book 9, Part 1. While these affairs in distant places passed, the various Iris Juno sends with haste to find bold Turnus, who with anxious thought the secret shade of his great grandsire sought. Retired alone, she found the daring man, and oped her rosy lips and thus began. What none of all the gods could grant thy vows, that, Turnus, this auspicious day bestows. Aeneas, gone to seek the Arcadian prince, has left the Trojan camp without defence, and short of succours there employs his pains in parts remote to raise the Tuscan swains. Now snatch an hour that favours thy designs, unite thy forces, and attack their lines this said on equal wings she poised her weight and formed a radiant rainbow in her flight the daunian hero lifts his hands eyes and thus invokes the goddess as she flies iris the grace of heaven what power divine has sent thee down through dusky clouds to shine see they divide immortal day appears and glittering planets dancing in their spheres with joy these happy omens I obey, and follow to the war the god that leads the way. Thus having said, as by the brook he stood, he scooped the water from the crystal flood. Then with his hands the drops to heaven he throws, and loads the powers above with offered vows. Now march the bold confederates through the plain, well horsed, well clad, a rich and shining train. Mesopus leads the van, and in the rear the sons of Tereus in bright arms appear. In the main battle with his flaming crest the mighty Turnus towers above the rest. Silent they move, majestically slow, like ebbing Nile or Ganges in his flow. The Trojans view the dusty cloud from far, and the dark menace of the distant war. Caicus from the rampire saw it rise, blackening the fields and thickening through the skies. Then to his fellows thus aloud he calls, What rolling clouds, my friends, approach the walls? Arm, arm, and man the works, prepare your spears and pointed darts, the Latian host appears. Thus warned, they shut their gates, with shouts ascend the bulwarks, and, secure, their foes attend. For their wise general, with foreseeing care, had charged them not to tempt the doubtful war, nor, though provoked, in open fields advance, but close within their lines attend their chance. Unwilling, yet they keep the strict command, and sourly wait in arms the hostile band. The fiery Turnus flew before the rest, a piebald steed of Thracian strain he pressed, his helm of massy gold, and crimson was his crest, with twenty horse to second his designs, an unexpected foe he faced the lines. Is there, he said, in arms who bravely dare his leader's honour and his danger share? Then, spurring on, his brandished dart he threw in sign of war, applauding shouts ensue. Amazed to find a dastard race that run behind the rampires and the battle shun, he rides around the camp with rolling eyes and stops at every post and every passage tries. So roams the knightly wolf about the fold, wet with descending showers and stiff with cold. He howls for hunger and he grins for pain, his gnashing teeth are exercised in vain. And, impotent of anger, finds no way in his distended paws to grasp the prey. The mothers listen, but the bleating lambs securely swig the dug beneath the dams. Thus ranges eager Turnus o'er the plain, sharp with desire and furious with disdain. Surveys each passage with a piercing sight to force his foes in equal field to fight. Thus while he gazes round, at length he spies where, fenced with strong redoubts, their navy lies, close underneath the walls. The washing tide secures from all approach this weaker side. 
he takes the wished occasion fills his hand with ready fires and shakes a flaming brand urged by his presence every soul is warmed and every hand with kindled furs is armed from the furred pines the scattering sparkles fly fat vapors mixed with flames involve the sky what power o oh muses could avert the flame which threatened in the fleet the trojan name tell for the fact through length of time obscure is hard to faith yet shall the fame endure tis said that when the chief prepared his flight and felled his timber from mount ida's height the grand am goddess then approached her son and with a mother's majesty begun grant me she said the sole request i bring since conquered heaven has owned you for its king on ida's brows for ages past there stood with firs and maples filled a shady wood and on the summit rose a sacred grove where i was worshipped with religious love those woods that holy grove my long delight i gave the trojan prince to speed his flight now filled with fear on their behalf i come let neither winds or set nor waves entomb the floating forests of the sacred pine but let it be their safety to be mine then thus replied her awful son who rolls the radiant stars and heaven and earth controls how dare you mother endless date demand for vessels moulded by a mortal hand what then is fate shall bold aeneas ride of safety certain on the uncertain tide yet what i can i grant when wafted o'er the chief is landed on the latian shore whatever ships escape the raging storms at my command shall change their fading forms to nymphs divine and plough the watery way like dotis and the daughters of the sea to seal his sacred vow by styx he swore the lake of liquid pitch the dreary shore and phlegathon's innavigable flood and the black regions of his brother god he said and shook the skies with his imperial nod and now at length the numbered hours were come prefixed by fate's irrevocable doom when the great mother of the gods was free to save her ships and finish jove's decree first from the quarter of the morn there sprung a light that signed the heavens and shot along then from a cloud fringed round with golden fires were timbrels heard and berecynthian choirs and last a voice with more than mortal sounds both hosts in arms opposed with equal horror wounds o trojan race your needless aid forbear and know my ships are my peculiar care with greater ease the bold rutulian may with hissing brands attempt to burn the sea than singe my sacred pines but you my charge loosed from your crooked anchors launch at large exalted each a nymph forsake the sand and swim the seas at cybele's command no sooner had the goddess ceased to speak when lo the obedient ships their halsers break and strange to tell like dolphins in the main they plunge their prows and dive and spring again as many beauteous maids the billows sweep as rode before tall vessels on the deep the foes surprised with wonder stood aghast mesopus curbed his fiery courses haste old tiber roared and raising up his head called back his waters to their oozy bed turnus alone undaunted bore the shock and with these words his trembling troops bespoke these monsters for the trojans fate are meant and are by jove for black presages sent he takes the coward's last relief away for fly they cannot and constrained to stay must yield unfought a base inglorious prey the liquid half of all the globe is lost heaven shuts the seas and we secure the coast theirs is no more than that small spot of ground which myriads of our martial men surround their fates i fear not nor vain oracles twas given to venus they should cross the seas and land secure upon the latian plains their promised hour is past and mine remains tis in the fate of turnus to destroy with sword and fire the faithless race of troy 
shall such affronts as these alone inflame the grecian brothers and the grecian name my cause and theirs is one a fatal strife and final ruin for a ravished wife was not enough that punished for the crime they fell but will they fall a second time one would have thought they paid enough before to curse the costly sex and durst offend no more can they securely trust their feeble wall a slight partition a thin interval betwixt their fate and them when troy though built by hands divine yet perished by their guilt lend me for once my friends your valiant hands to force from out their lines these dastard bands less than a thousand ships will end this war nor vulcan needs his fated arms prepare let all the tuscans all the arcadians join nor these nor those shall frustrate my design let them not fear the treasons of the night the robbed palladium the pretended flight our onset shall be made in open light no wooden engine shall their town betray fires they shall have around but fires by day no grecian babes before their camp appear whom hector's arms detained the tenth tardy year now since the sun is rolling to the west give we the silent night to needful rest refresh your bodies and your arms prepare the morn shall end the small remains of war the post of honour to messapus falls to keep the nightly guard to watch the walls to pitch the fires at distances around and close the trojans in their scanty ground twice seven rutulian captains ready stand and twice seven hundred horse these chiefs command all clad in shining arms the works invest each with a radiant helm and waving crest stretched at their length they press the grassy ground they laugh they sing the jolly bowls go round with lights and cheerful fires renew the day and pass the wakeful night in feasts and play the trojans from above their foes beheld and with armed legions all the rampires filled seized with affright their gates they first explore join works to works with bridges tower to tower thus all things needful for defence abound menestheus and brave serestus walk the round commissioned by their absent prince to share the common danger and divide the care the soldiers draw their lots and as they fall by turns relieve each other on the wall nigh where the foes their utmost guards advanced to watch the gate was warlike nisus chance his father hertacus of noble blood his mother was a huntress of the wood and sent him to the wars well could he bear his lance in fight and dart the flying spear but better skilled unerring shafts to send beside him stood euryalus his friend euryalus than whom the trojan host nor fairer faced or sweeter air could boast scarce had the down to shade his cheeks begun one was their care and their delight was one one common hazard in the war they shared and now were both by choice upon the guard then nisus thus or do the gods inspire this warmth or make we gods of our desire a generous ardor boils within my breast eager of action enemy to rest this urges me to fight and fires my mind to leave a memorable name behind thou seest the foe secure how faintly shine their scattered fires the most in sleep supine along the ground an easy conquest lie the wakeful few the fuming flagon ply all hushed around now hear what i revolve a thought unripe and scarcely yet resolve our absent prince both camp and council mourn by message both would hasten his return if they confer what i demand on thee for fame is recompense enough for me methinks beneath yon hill i have espied a way that safely will my passage guide euryalus stood listening while he spoke with love of praise and noble envy struck then to his ardent friend exposed his mind all this alone and leaving me behind am i unworthy nisus to be joined thinkest thou i can my share of glory yield or send thee unassisted to the field not so my father taught my childhood arms born in a siege and bred among alarms nor is my youth unworthy of my friend nor of the heaven-born hero i attend 
the thing called life with ease i can disclaim and think it oversold to purchase fame then nisus thus alas thy tender years would minister new matter to my fears so may the gods who view this friendly strife restore me to thy loved embrace with life condemned to pay my vows as sure i trust this thy request is cruel and unjust but if some chance as many chances are and doubtful hazards in the deeds of war if one should reach my head there let it fall and spare thy life i would not perish all thy bloomy youth deserves a longer date live thou to mourn thy love's unhappy fate to bear my mangled body from the foe or buy it back and funeral rites bestow or if hard fortune shall those dues deny thou canst at least an empty tomb supply o oh, let not me the widow's tears renew nor let a mother's curse my name pursue thy pious parent who for love of thee forsook the coasts of friendly sicily her age committing to the seas and wind when every weary matron stayed behind to this euryalus you plead in vain and but protract the cause you cannot gain no more delays but haste with that he wakes the nodding watch each to his office takes the guard relieved the generous couple went to find the council at the royal tent all creatures else forgot their daily care and sleep the common gift of nature share except the trojan peers who wakeful sat in nightly council for the endangered state they vote a message to their absent chief show their distress and beg a swift relief amid the camp a silent seat they chose remote from clamour and secure from foes on their left arms their ample shields they bear the right reclined upon the bending spear now nisus and his friend approach the guard and beg admission eager to be heard the affair important not to be deferred ascanius bids him be conducted in ordering the more experienced to begin the nisus thus ye fathers lend your ears nor judge our bold attempt beyond our years the foe securely drenched in sleep and wine neglect their watch the fires but thinly shine and where the smoke in cloudy vapours flies covering the plain and curling to the skies betwixt two paths which at the gate divide close by the sea a passage we have spied which will our way to great aeneas guide expect each hour to see him safe again loaded with spoils of foes and battle slain snatch we the lucky minute while we may nor can we be mistaken in the way for hunting in the vale we both have seen the rising turrets and the stream between and know the winding course with every ford he ceased and old alethes took the word our country gods in whom our trust we place will yet from ruin save the trojan race while we behold such dauntless worth appear in dawning youth and souls so void of fear then into tears of joy the father broke each in his longing arms by turns he took panted and paused and thus again he spoke ye brave young men what equal gifts can we in recompense of such desert decree the greatest sure and best you can receive the gods and your own conscious worth will give the rest our grateful general will bestow and young ascanius till his manhood owe and i whose welfare in my father lies ascanius adds by the great deities by my dear country by my household gods by hoary vesta's rites and dark abodes adjure you both on you my fortune stands that and my faith i plight into your hands make me but happy in his safe return whose wanted presence i can only mourn your common gift shall two large goblets be of silver wrought with curious imagery and high embossed which when old priam reigned my conquering sire at sacked arisba gained and more two tripods cast in antic mould with two great talents of the finest gold beside a costly bowl engraved with art which dido gave when first she gave her heart but if in conquered italy we reign when spoils by lot the victor shall obtain thou sawst the courser by proud turnus pressed that nisus and his arms and nodding crest and shield from chance exempt shall be thy share twelve labouring slaves twelve handmaids young and fair all clad in rich attire and trained with care and last a latian field with fruitful plains 
and a large portion of the king's domains but thou whose years are more to mine allied no fate my vowed affection shall divide from thee heroic youth be wholly mine take full possession all my soul is thine one faith one fame one fate shall both attend my life's companion and my bosom friend my peace shall be committed to thy care and to thy conduct my concerns in war then thus the young euryalus replied whatever fortune good or bad betide the same shall be my age as now my youth no time shall find me wanting to my truth this only from your goodness let me gain and this ungranted all rewards are vain of priam's royal race my mother came and sure the best that ever bore the name whom neither troy nor sicily could hold from me departing but o'er spent and old my fate she followed ignorant of this whatever danger neither parting kiss nor pious blessing taken her i leave and in this only act of all my life deceive by this right hand unconscious knight i swear my soul so sad a farewell could not bear be you her comfort fill my vacant place permit me to presume so great a grace support her age forsaken and distressed that hope alone will fortify my breast against the worst of fortunes and of fears he said the moved assistants melt in tears then thus ascanius wonderstruck to see that image of his filial piety so great beginnings in so green an age exact the faith which i again engage thy mother all the dues shall justly claim crusa had and only want the name whate'er event thy bold attempt shall have tis merit to have borne a son so brave now by my head a sacred oath i swear my father used it what returning here crowned with success i for thyself prepare that if thou fail shall thy loved mother share he said and weeping while he spoke the word from his broad belt he drew a shining sword magnificent with gold lycaon made and in an ivory scabbard sheathed the blade this was his gift great menestheus gave his friend a lion's hide his body to defend and good elethes furnished him beside with his own trusty helm of temper tried thus armed they went the noble trojans wait their issuing forth and follow to the gate with prayers and vows above the rest appears ascanius manly far beyond his years and messages committed to their care which all in winds were lost and flitting air the trenches first they passed then took their way where their proud foes in pitched pavilions lay to many fatal ere themselves were slain they found the careless host dispersed upon the plain who gorged and drunk with wine supinely snore on harnessed chariots stand along the shore amidst the wheels and reins the goblet by a medley of debauch and war they lie observing narcissus showed his friend the sight behold a conquest gained without a fight occasion offers and i stand prepared there lies our way be thou upon the guard and look around while i securely go and hew a passage through the sleeping foe softly he spoke then striding took his way with his drawn sword where haughty ramnes lay his head raised high on tapestry beneath and heaving from his breast he drew his breath a king and prophet by king turnus loved but fate by prescience cannot be removed him and his sleeping slaves he slew then spies where remus with his rich retinue lies his armor-bearer first and next he kills his charioteer entrenched betwixt the wheels and his loved horses last invades their lord full on his neck he drives the fatal sword the gasping head flies off a purple flood flows from the trunk that welters in the blood which by the spurning heels dispersed around 
the bed besprinkles and bedews the ground lamus the bold and lamerus the strong he slew and then siranus fair and young from dice and wine the youth retired to rest and puffed the fumy god from out his breast even then he dreamt of drink and lucky play more lucky had it lasted till the day the famished lion thus with hunger bold o'erleaps the fences of the nightly fold and tears the peaceful flocks with silent awe trembling they lie and pant beneath his paw nor with less rage euryalus employs the wrathful sword or fewer foes destroys but on the ignoble crowd his fury flew he phadus hebesus and rhetus slew oppressed with heavy sleep the former fell but rhetus wakeful and observing all behind a spacious jar he slinked for fear the fatal iron found and reached him there for as he rose it pierced his naked side and reeking thence returned and crimson died the wound pours out a stream of wine and blood the purple soul comes floating in the flood now where messapus quartered they arrive the fires were fainting there and just alive the warrior horses tied in order fed nisus observed the discipline and said our eager thirst of blood may both betray and see the scattered streaks of dawning day foe to nocturnal thefts no more my friend here let our glutted execution end a lane through slaughtered bodies we have made the bold euryalus though loath obeyed of arms and arras and of plate they find a precious load but these they leave behind yet fond of gaudy spoils the boy would stay to make the rich caparison his prey which on the steed of conquered ramnes lay nor did his eyes less longingly behold the girdle belt with nails of burnished gold this present caedicus the rich bestowed on remulus when friendship first they vowed and absent joined in hospitable ties ye dying to his heir bequeathed the prize till by the conquering ardean troops oppressed he fell and they the glorious gift possessed these glittering spoils now made the victor's gain he to his body suits but suits in vain messapus helm he finds among the rest and laces on and wears the waving crest proud of their conquest prouder of their prey they leave the camp and take the ready way but far they had not passed before they spied three hundred horse with volscans for their guide the queen a legion to king turnus sent but the swift horse the slower foot prevent and now advancing sought the leader's tent they saw the pair for through the doubtful shade his shining helm euryalus betrayed on which the moon with full reflection played tis not for naught cried volscans from the crowd these men go there then raised his voice aloud stand stand why thus in arms and whither bent from whence to whom and on what errand sent silent they scud away and haste their flight to neighbouring woods and trust themselves to night the speedy horse all passages belay and spur their smoking steeds to cross their way and watch each entrance of the winding wood black was the forest thick with beech it stood horrid with fern and intricate with thorn few paths of human feet or tracks of beasts were worn the darkness of the shades his heavy prey and fear misled the younger from his way but nisus hit the turns with happier haste and thoughtless of his friend the forest passed and alban plains from alba's name so called where king latinus then his oxen stalled till turning at the length he stood his ground and missed his friend and cast his eyes around ah wretch he cried where have i left behind the unhappy youth where shall i hope to find or what way take again he ventures back and treads the mazes of his former track he winds the wood and listening hears the noise of tramping coursers and the rider's voice the sound approached and suddenly he viewed the foes enclosing and his friend pursued 
forlaid and taken while he strove in vain the shelter of the friendly shades to gain what should he next attempt what arms employ what fruitless force to free the captive boy or desperate should he rush and lose his life with odds oppressed in such unequal strife resolved at length his pointed spear he shook and casting on the moon a mournful look guardian of the groves and goddess of the night fair queen he said direct my dart aright if e'er my pious father for my sake did grateful offerings on thy altars make or i increased them with my sylvan toils and hung thy holy roofs with savage spoils give me to scatter these then from his ear he poised and aimed and launched the trembling spear the deadly weapon hissing from the grove impetuous on the back of sumul drove pierced his thin armor drank his vital blood and in his body left the broken wood he staggers round his eyeballs roll in death and with short sobs he gasps away his breath all stand amazed a second javelin flies with equal strength and quivers through the skies this through thy temples targus forced the way and in the brain-pan warmly buried lay fierce volscens foams with rage and gazing round descried not him who gave the fatal wound nor knew to fix revenge but thou he cries shalt pay for both and at the prisoner flies with his drawn sword then struck with deep despair that cruel sight the lover could not bear but from his govert rushed in open view and sent his voice before him as he flew me me he cried turn all your swords alone on me the fact confessed the fault my own he neither could nor durst the guiltless youth ye moon and stars bear witness to the truth his only crime if friendship can offend is too much love to his unhappy friend too late he speaks the sword which fury guides driven with full force had pierced his tender sides down fell the beauteous youth the yawning wound gushed out a purple stream and stained the ground his snowy neck reclines upon his breast like a fair flower by the keen share oppressed like a white poppy sinking on the plain whose heavy head is overcharged with rain despair and rage and vengeance justly vowed drove nisus headlong on the hostile crowd volscens he seeks on him alone he bends borne back and bored by his surrounding friends onward he pressed and kept him still in sight then whirled aloft his sword with all his might the unerring steel descended while he spoke pierced his wide mouth and through his wazon broke dying he slew and staggering on the plain with swimming eyes he sought his lover slain then quiet on his bleeding bosom fell content in death to be revenged so well o oh, happy friends for if my verse can give immortal life your fame shall ever live fixed as the capital's foundation lies and spread where'er the roman eagle flies End of section 17section 18 of the aeneid of virgil this librivox recording is in the public domain book 9 part 2 the conquering party first divide the prey then their slain leader to the camp convey with wonder as they went the troops were filled to see such numbers whom so few had killed serranus ramnes and the rest they found vast crowds the dying and the dead surround and the yet reeking blood o'erflows the ground all knew the helmet which messapus lost but mourned a purchase that so dear had cost now rose the ruddy morn from tython's bed and with the dawn of day the skies are spread nor long the sun his daily course withheld but added colours to the world revealed when early turnus wakening with a light all clad in armour calls his troops to fight his martial men with fierce harangue he fired and his own ardour in their souls inspired this done to give new terror to his foes the heads of nisus and his friend he shows raised high on pointed spears a ghastly sight loud peals of shouts ensue 
and barbarous delight meantime the trojans run where danger calls they line their trenches and they man their walls in front extended to the left they stood safe was the right surrounded by the flood but casting from their towers a frightful view they saw the faces which too well they knew though then disguised in death and smeared all o'er with filth obscene and dropping putrid gore soon hasty fame through the sad city bears the mournful message to the mother's ears an icy cold benumbs her limbs she shakes her cheeks the blood her hand the web forsakes she runs the rampires round amidst the war nor fears the flying darts she rends her hair and fills with loud laments the liquid air thus then my loved euryalus appears thus looks the prop my declining years wast on this face my famished eyes i fed ah how unlike the living is the dead and couldst thou leave me cruel thus alone not one kind kiss from a departing son no look no last adieu before he went in an ill-boding hour to slaughter sent cold on the ground and pressing foreign clay to latian dogs and fowls he lies a prey nor was i near to close his dying eyes to wash his wounds to weep his obsequies to call about his corpse his crying friends or spread the mantle made for other ends on his dear body which i wove with care nor did my daily pains or nightly labour spare where shall i find his corpse what earth sustains his trunk dismembered and his cold remains for this alas i left my needful ease exposed my life to winds and winter seas if any pity touch rutulian hearts here empty all your quivers all your darts or if they fail thou jove conclude my woe and send me thunderstruck to shades below her shrieks and clamours pierce the trojans ears unman their courage and augment their fears nor young ascanius could the sight sustain nor old ilaneus his tears restrain but actor and idaeus jointly sent to bear the maddening mother to her tent and now the trumpets terribly from far with rattling clangour rouse the sleepy war the soldiers shout succeed the brazen sounds and heaven from pole to pole the noise rebounds the volscians bear their shields upon their head and rushing forward form a moving shed these fill the ditch those pull the bulwarks down some raise the ladders others scale the town but where void spaces on the walls appear or thin defence they pour their forces there with poles and missive weapons from afar the trojans keep aloof the rising war taught by their ten years siege defensive fight they roll down ribs of rocks on unresisted weight to break the penthouse with the ponderous blow which yet the patient volscians undergo but could not bear the unequal combat long for where the trojans find the thickest throng the ruin falls their shattered shields give way and their crushed heads become an easy prey they shrink for fear abated of their rage nor longer dare in a blind fight engage contented now to gall them from below with darts and slings and with a distant bow elsewhere mezentius terrible to view a blazing pine within the trenches threw but brave messapus neptune's warlike son broke down the palisades the trenches won and loud for ladders calls to scale the town calliope begin ye sacred nine inspire your poet in his high design to sing what slaughter manly turnus made what souls he sent below the stygian shade what fame the soldiers with their captain share and the vast circuit of the fatal war for you in singing martial facts excel you best remember and alone can tell there stood a tower amazing to the sight built up of beams and of stupendous height art and the nature of the place conspired to furnish all the strength that war required 
to level this the bold italians join the wary trojans obviate their design with weighty stones o'erwhelm their troops below shoot through the loopholes and sharp javelins throw turnus the chief tossed from his thundering hand against the wooden walls a flaming brand it stuck the fiery plague the winds were high the planks were seasoned and the timber dry contagion caught the posts it spread along scorched and to distance drove the scattered throng the trojans fled the fire pursued amain still gathering fast upon the trembling train till crowding to the corners of the wall down the defence and the defenders fall the mighty flaw makes heaven itself resound the dead and dying trojans strew the ground the tower that followed on the fallen crew whelmed o'er their heads and buried whom it slew some stuck upon the darts themselves had sent all the same equal ruin underwent young lycus and helenor only scape saved how they know not from the steepy leap helenor elder of the two by birth on one side royal one a son of earth whom to the lydian king lycimnia bare and sent her boasted bastard to the war a privilege which none but freemen share slight were his arms a sword and silver shield no marks of honour charged its empty field light as he fell so light the youth arose and rising found himself amidst his foes nor flight was left nor hopes to force his way emboldened by despair he stood at bay and like a stag whom all the troop surrounds of eager huntsmen and invading hounds resolved on death he dissipates his fears and bounds aloft against the pointed spears so dares the youth secure of death and throws his dying body on his thickest foes but lycus swifter of his feet by far runs doubles winds and turns amidst the war springs to the walls and leaves his foes behind and snatches at the beam he first can find looks up and leaps aloft at all the stretch in hopes the helping hand of some kind friend to reach but turnus followed hard his hunted prey his spear had almost reached him in the way short of his reins and scarce a span behind fool said the chief though fleeter than the wind couldst thou presume to scape when i pursue he said and downward by the feet he drew the trembling dastard at the tug he falls vast ruins come along rent from the smoking walls thus on some silver swan or timorous hare jove's bird comes sousing down from upper air her crooked talons truss the fearful prey then out of sight she soars and wings her way so seizes the grim wolf the tender lamb in vain lamented by the bleating dam then rushing onward with a barbarous cry the troops of turnus to the combat fly the ditch with fagots filled the daring foe tossed firebrands to the steepy turrets throw ilionius as bold lucetius came to force the gate and feed the kindling flame rolled down the fragment of a rock so right it crushed him double underneath the weight two more young liger and asilas slew to bend the bow young liger a better knew asilas best the pointed javelin threw brave caeneus laid ortigius on the plain the victor caeneus was by turnus slain by the same hand clonius and itis fall sagar and ida standing on the wall from capis arm his fate privernus found hurt by themela first but slight the wound his shield thrown by to mitigate the smart he clapped his hand upon the wounded part the second shaft came swift and unespied and pierced his hand and nailed it to his side transfixed his breathing lungs and beating heart the soul came issuing out and hissed against the dart the son of archens shone amid the rest in glittering armour and a purple vest fair was his face his eyes inspiring love bred by his father in the martian grove where the fat altars of palicus flame and send in arms to purchase early fame 
him when he spied from far the tuscan king laid by the lance and took him to the sling thrice whirled the thong around his head and threw the heated lead half melted as it flew it pierced his hollow temples and his brain the youth came tumbling down and spurned the plain then young ascanius who before this day was wont in woods to shoot the savage prey first bent in martial strife the twanging bow and exercised against a human foe with this bereft numanus of his life who turnus younger sister took to wife proud of his realm and of his royal bride vaunting before his troops and lengthened with a stride in these insulting terms the trojans he defied twice conquered cowards now your shame is shown cooped up a second time within your town who dare not issue forth in open field but hold your walls before you for a shield thus treat you war thus our alliance force what gods what madness hither steered your course you shall not find the sons of atreus here nor need the frauds of sly ulysses fear strong from the cradle of a sturdy brood we bear our newborn infants to the flood there bathed amid the stream our boys we hold with winter hardened and inured to cold they wake before the day to range the wood kill ere they eat nor taste unconquered food no sports but what belong to war they know to break the stubborn colt to bend the bow our youth of labour patient earn their bread hardly they work with frugal diet fed from ploughs and harrows sent to seek renown they fight in fields and storm the shaken town no part of life from toils of war is free no change in age or difference in degree we plough and till in arms our oxen feel instead of goads the spur and pointed steel the inverted lance makes furrows in the plain even time that changes all yet changes us in vain the body not the mind nor can control the immortal vigour or abate the soul our helms defend the young disguise the grey we live by plunder and delight in prey your vests embroidered with rich purple shine in sloth you glory and in dances join your vests have sweeping sleeves with female pride your turbans underneath your chins are tied go phrygians to your dindymus again go less than women in the shapes of men go mixed with eunuchs in the mother's rites where with unequal sound the flute invites sing dance and howl by turns in ida's shade resign the war to men who know the martial trade this foul reproach ascanius could not hear with patience or a vowed revenge forbear at the full stretch of both his hands he drew and almost joined the horns of the tough yew but first before the throne of jove he stood and thus with lifted hands invoked the god my first attempt great jupiter succeed an annual offering in thy grove shall bleed a snow-white steer before thy altar led who like his mother bears aloft his head butts with his threatening brows and bellowing stands and dares the fight and spurns the yellow sands jove bowed the heavens and lent a gracious ear and thundered on the left amidst the clear sounded at once the bow and swiftly flies the feathered death and hisses through the skies the steel through both his temples forced the way extended on the ground numanus lay go now vain boaster and true valour scorn the phrygians twice subdued yet make this third return ascanius said no more the trojans shake the heavens with shouting and new vigour take apollo then bestrode a golden cloud to view the feats of arms and fighting crowd and thus the beardless victor he bespoke aloud advance illustrious youth increase in fame and wide from east to west extend thy name offspring of gods thyself and rome shall owe to thee a race of demigods below 
This is the way to heaven, the powers divine, from this beginning date the Julian line. To thee, to them, and their victorious heirs, the conquered war is due, and the vast world is theirs. Troy is too narrow for thy name. He said, and plunging downward shot his radiant head, dispelled the breathing air that broke his flight, shorn of his beams a man to mortal sight. Old Bute's form he took, Anchises' squire, now left to rule Ascanius by his sire. His wrinkled visage and his hoary hairs, his mien, his habit, and his arms he wears, and thus salutes the boy, too forward for his years. Suffice it thee, thy father's worthy son, the warlike prize thou hast already won. The god of archers gives thy youth a part of his own praise, nor envies equal art. Now tempt the war no more. He said, and flew obscure in air, and vanished from their view. The Trojans by his arms their patron know, and hear the twanging of his heavenly bow. Then duteous force they use, and Phoebus' name, to keep from fight the youth too fond of fame. Undaunted, they themselves no danger shun. From wall to wall the shouts and clamours run. They bend their bows, they whirl their slings around. Heaps of spent arrows fall and strew the ground, and helms and shields and rattling arms resound. The combat thickens, like the storm that flies from westward when the showery kids arise. Or pattering hail comes pouring on the main when Jupiter descends in hardened rain. Or bellowing clouds burst with a stormy sound, and with an armed winter strew the ground. Pandrus and Bitius, thunderbolts of war, whom Hera to bold Alcanor bear. On Ida's top, two youths of height and size, like firs that on their mother mountain rise, presuming on their force the gates unbar, and of their own accord invite the war. With fates averse against their king's command, Armed on the right and on the left they stand, and flank the passage. Shining steel they wear, and waving crests above their heads appear. Thus two tall oaks that Padus' banks adorn, lift up to heaven their leafy heads unshorn. And, overpressed with nature's heavy load, danced the whistling winds, and at each other nod. In flows a tide of Latians, when they see the gates set open and the passage free. Bold Quercans with rash Tmaris rushing on, Equicolus that in bright armor shone, and Hymen first, but soon repulsed they fly, or in the well-defended pass they die. These with success are fired, and those with rage, and each on equal terms at length engage drawn from their lines and issuing on the plain the trojans hand to hand the fight maintain fierce turnus in another quarter fought when suddenly the unhoped-for news was brought the foes had left the fastness of their place prevailed in fight and had his men in chase he quits the attack and to prevent their fate runs where the giant brothers guard the gate the first he met Antiphates the brave, but base begotten on a Theban slave. Sarpedon's son he slew. The deadly dart found passage through his breast and pierced his heart. Fixed in the wound the Italian cornel stood, warmed in his lungs and in his vital blood. Aphidnus next, and Eurymanthus dies, and Meropes, and the gigantic size of Bitius, threatening with his ardent eyes. Not by the feeble dart he fell oppressed, a dart were lost within that roomy breast, but from a knotted lance, large, heavy, strong, which roared like thunder as it whirled along. Not two bull hides the impetuous force withhold, nor coat of double mail with scales of gold. Down sunk the monster bulk and pressed the ground, his arms and clattering shield on the vast body sound. Not with less ruin than the barge and mole, raised on the seas the surges to control, at once comes tumbling down the rocky wall. Prone to the deep, the stone's disjointed fall of the vast pile, the scattered ocean flies. Black sands discolored froth and mingled mud arise. The frighted billows roll and seek the shores, then trembles Prochita, then Ischia roars, 
Typhaeus, thrown beneath by Jove's command, Astonished at the flaw that shakes the land, Soon shifts his weary side, and scarce awake, With wonder feels the weight press lighter on his back. The warrior god the Latian troops inspired, New strung their sinews, and their courage fired, But chills the Trojan hearts with cold affright, Then black despair precipitates their flight. When Pandarus beheld his brother killed, The town with fear and wild confusion filled, He turns the hinges of the heavy gate With both his hands, and adds his shoulders to the weight, Some happier friends within the walls enclosed, The rest shut out to certain death exposed. Fool as he was, and frantic in his care, To admit young Turnus and include the war, he thrust amid the crowd, securely bold, like a fierce tiger pent amid the fold. Too late his blazing buckler they descry, and sparkling fires that shot from either eye, his mighty members and his ample breast, his rattling armor and his crimson crest. Far from that hated face the Trojans fly, all but the fool who sought his destiny. Mad Pandora steps forth, with vengeance vowed for Bitius's death, and threatens thus aloud. These are not Ardea's walls, nor this the town Amata proffers with Lavinia's crown. Tis hostile earth you tread. Of hope bereft, no means of safe return by flight are left. To whom, with countenance calm, and soul sedate, thus Turnus. Then begin, and try thy fate. My message to the ghost of Priam bear. Tell him a new Achilles sent thee there. A lance of tough ground ash the Trojan threw, Rough in the rind and knotted as it grew. With his full force he whirled it first around, But the soft yielding air received the wound. Imperial Juno turned the course before, And fixed the wandering weapon in the door. But hope not thou, said Turnus, When I strike to shun thy fate, our force is not alike, nor thy steel tempered by the Lemnian god. Then rising on his utmost stretch he stood and aimed from high. The full descending blow cleaves the broad front and beardless cheeks in two. Down sinks the giant with a thundering sound. His ponderous limbs oppress the trembling ground. Blood, brains, and foam gush from the gaping wound. Scalp, face, and shoulders the keen steel divides, And the shared visage hangs on equal sides. The Trojans fly from their approaching fate, And, had the victor then secured the gate, And to his troops without unclosed the bars, One lucky day had ended all his wars. But boiling youth and blind desire of blood Pushed on his fury to pursue the crowd, Hamstringed behind, unhappy Gyges died. Then Phalaris is added to his side, The pointed javelins from the dead he drew, And their friends' arms against their fellows threw. Strong Halis stands in vain, weak Phlegis flies, Saturnia still at hand new force and fire supplies. Then Halius, Pretanus, Alcander fall, Engaged against the foes who scaled the wall. But whom they feared without, they found within. At last, though late, by Lynceus he was seen. He calls new succors and assaults the prince, But weak his force, and vain is their defence. Turned to the right, his sword the hero drew, And at one blow the bold aggressor slew. He joints the neck, and with a stroke so strong, The helm flies off and bears the head along. Next him the huntsman Amicus he killed in darts envenomed and in poison skilled. Then Clytius fell beneath his fatal spear, and Cretius, whom the muses held so dear. He fought with courage, and he sung the fight. Arms were his business, verses his delight. The Trojan chiefs behold, with rage and grief, their slaughtered friends, and hasten their relief. Bold Menestheus rallies first the broken train, whom brave Seresthus and his troops sustain, to save the living and revenge the dead. Against one warrior's arms all Troy they led. O void of sense and courage, Menestheus cried, 
where can you hope your coward heads to hide ah where beyond these rampires can you run one man and in your camp enclosed you shun shall then a single sword such slaughter boast and pass unpunished from a numerous host forsaking honour and renouncing fame your gods your country and your king you shame this just reproach their virtue does excite they stand they join they thicken to the fight now turnus doubts and yet disdains to yield but with slow paces measures back the field and inches to the walls where tiber's tide washing the camp defends the weaker side the more he loses they advance the more and tread in every step he trod before they shout they bear him back and whom by might they cannot conquer they oppress with weight as compassed with a wood of spears around the lordly lion still maintains his ground grins horrible retires and turns again threats his distended paws and shakes his mane he loses while in vain he presses on nor will his courage let him dare to run so turnus fares and unresolved of flight moves tardy back and just recedes from fight yet twice enraged the combat he renews twice breaks and twice his broken foes pursues but now they swarm and with fresh troops supplied come rolling on and rush from every side nor juno who sustained his arms before dares with new strength suffice the exhausted store for jove with sour commands sent iris down to force the invader from the frighted town with labour spent no longer can he wield the heavy fanchion or sustain the shield o'erwhelmed with darts which from afar they fling the weapons round his hollow temples ring his golden helm gives way with stony blows battered and flat and beaten to his brows his crest is rashed away his ample shield is falsified and round with javelins filled the foe now faint the trojans overwhelm at Menestheus lays hard load upon his helm sick sweat succeeds he drops at every pore with the driving dust his cheeks are pasted o'er shorter and shorter every gasp he takes and vain efforts and hurtless blows he makes plunged in the flood and made the waters fly the yellow god the welcome burthen bore and wiped the sweat and washed away the gore then gently wafts him to the farther coast and sends him safe to cheer his anxious host end of section eighteen section nineteen of the aeneid of virgil this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the aeneid of virgil translated by john dryden book ten part one the gates of heaven unfold jove summons all the gods to council in the common hall sublimely seated he surveys from far the fields the camp the fortune of the war and all the inferior world from first to last the sovereign sidet in degrees are placed then thus the almighty sire began ye gods natives or denizens of blessed abodes from whence these murmurs and this change of mind this backward fate from what was first designed why this protracted war when my commands pronounced a peace and gave the latian lands what fear or hope on either part divides our heavens and arms our powers on different sides a lawful time of war at length will come nor need your haste anticipate the doom when carthage shall contend the world with rome shall force the rigid rocks and alpine chains and like a flood come pouring on the plains then is your time for faction and debate for partial favour and permitted hate let now your immature dissension cease sit quiet and compose your souls to peace thus jupiter in few unfolds the charge but lovely venus thus replies at large o power immense eternal energy 
for to what else protection can we fly seest thou the proud rutulians how they dare in fields unpunished and insult my care how lofty turnus vaunts amidst his train in shining arms triumphant on the plain even in their lines and trenches they contend and scarce their walls the trojan troops defend the town is filled with slaughter and o'erfloats with a red deluge their increasing moats aeneas ignorant and far from thence has left a camp exposed without defence this endless outrage shall they still sustain shall troy renewed be forced and fired again a second siege my banished issue fears and a new diomed in arms appears one more audacious mortal will be found and i thy daughter wait another wound yet if with fates averse without thy leave the latian lands my progeny receive bear they the pains of violated law and thy protection from their aid withdraw but if the gods their sure success foretell if those of heaven consent with those of hell to promise italy who dare debate the power of jove or fix another fate what should i tell of tempests on the main of aeolus usurping neptune's reign of iris sent with bacchanalian heat to inspire the matrons and destroy the fleet now juno to the stygian sky descends solicits hell for aid and arms the fiends that new example wanted yet above an act that well became the wife of jove electo raised by her with rage inflames the peaceful bosoms of the latian dames imperial sway no more exalts my mind such hopes i had indeed while heaven was kind now let my happier foes possess my place whom jove prefers before the trojan race and conquer they whom you with conquest grace since you can spare from all your wide command no spot of earth no hospitable land which may my wandering fugitives receive since haughty juno will not give you leave then father if i still may use that name by ruined troy yet smoking from the flame i beg you let ascanius by my care be freed from danger and dismiss the war inglorious let him live without a crown the father may be cast on coasts unknown struggling with fate but let me save the son mine is cythera mine the cyprian towers in those recesses and those sacred bowers obscurely let him rest his right resign to promised empire and his julian line then carthage may the ausonian towns destroy nor fear the race of a rejected boy what profits it my son to scape the fire armed with his gods and loaded with his sire to pass the perils of the seas and wind evade the greeks and leave the war behind to reach the italian shores if after all our second pergamus is doomed to fall much better had he curbed his high desires and hovered o'er his ill-extinguished fires to simois's banks the fugitives restore and give them back to war and all the woes before deep indignation swelled saturnia's heart and must i own she said my secret smart what with more decence were in silence kept and but for this unjust reproach had slept did god or man your favourite son advise with war unhoped the latians to surprise by fate you boast and by the gods decree he left his native land for italy confess the truth by mad cassandra more than heaven inspired he sought a foreign shore did i persuade to trust his second troy to the raw conduct of a beardless boy with walls unfinished which himself forsakes and through the waves a wandering voyage takes when have i urged him meanly to demand the tuscan aid and arm a quiet land did i or iris give this mad advice or made the fool himself the fatal choice you think it hard the latians should destroy with swords your trojans and with fires your troy hard and unjust indeed 
for men to draw their native air nor take a foreign law that turnus is permitted still to live to whom his birth a god and goddess give but yet is just and lawful for your line to drive their fields and force with fraud to join realms not your own among your clans divide and from the bridegroom tear the promised bride petition while you public arms prepare pretend a peace and yet provoke a war twas given to you your darling son to shroud to draw the dastard from the fighting crowd and for a man obtend an empty cloud from flaming fleets you turned the fire away and changed the ships to daughters of the sea but is my crime the queen of heaven offends if she presume to save her suffering friends your son not knowing what his foes decree you say is absent absent let him be yours is Kithera, yours the cyprian towers the soft recesses and the sacred bowers why do you then these needless arms prepare and thus provoke a people prone to war did i with fire the trojan town deface or hinder from return your exiled race was i the cause of mischief or the man whose lawless lust the fatal war began think on whose faith the adulterous youth relied who promised who procured the spartan bride when all the united states of greece combined to purge the world of the perfidious kind then was your time to fear the trojan fate your quarrels and complaints are now too late thus juno murmurs rise with mixed applause just as they favour or dislike the cause so winds when yet unfledged in woods they lie in whispers first their tender voices try then issue on the main with bellowing rage and storms to trembling mariners presage then thus to both replied the imperial god who shakes heaven's axles with his awful nod when he begins the silent senate stand with reverence listening to the dread command the clouds dispel the winds their breath restrain and the hushed waves lie flatted on the main celestials your attentive ears incline since said the god the trojans must not join in wished alliance with the latian line since endless jarrings and immortal hate tend but to discompose our happy state the war henceforward be resigned to fate each to his proper fortune stand or fall equal and unconcerned i look on all rutulians trojans are the same to me and both shall draw the lots their fates decree let these assault if fortune be their friend and if she favours those let those defend the fates will find their way the thunderer said and shook the sacred honours of his head attesting styx the inviolable flood and the black regions of his brother god trembled the poles of heaven and earth confessed the nod this end the sessions had the senate rise and to his palace wait their sovereign through the skies meantime intent upon their siege the foes within their walls the trojan host enclose they wound they kill they watch at every gate renew the fires and urge their happy fate the aeneans wish in vain their wanted chief hopeless of flight more hopeless of relief thin on the towers they stand and even those few a feeble fainting and dejected crew yet in the face of danger some there stood the two bold brothers of sarpedon's blood asius and Achmon, both the asaraki young hymen and though young resolved to die with these were clarus and thymetis joined tibris and castor both of lycian kind from Achmon's hands a rolling stone there came so large it half deserved a mountain's name strong sinewed was the youth and big of bone his brother menestheus could not more have done or the great father of the intrepid son some firebrands throw some flights of arrows send and some with darts and some with stones defend 
Amid the press appears the beauteous boy, The care of Venus and the hope of Troy. His lovely face unarmed, his head was bare, In ringlets o'er his shoulders hung his hair. His forehead circled with a diadem, Distinguished from the crowd he shines a gem, Enchased in gold or polished ivory set, Amidst the meaner foil of sable jet. Nor Ismaras was wanting to the war, Directing pointed arrows from afar, And death with poison armed, in Lydia born, Where plenteous harvests the fat fields adorn, Where proud Pactolus floats the fruitful lands, And leaves a rich manure of golden sands. There Capis, author of the Capuan name, And there was Menestheus too, increased in fame, Since Turnus from the camp he cast with shame. Thus mortal war was waged on either side. Meantime the hero cuts the nightly tide. For, anxious, from Evander when he went, He sought the Tyrene camp and Tarchon's tent. Exposed the cause of coming to the chief, His name and country told, and asked relief. Proposed the terms, his own small strength declared, What vengeance proud Mazentius had prepared what turnus bold and violent designed then showed the slippery state of humankind and a fickle fortune warned him to beware and to his wholesome counsel added prayer tarchon without delay the treaty signs and to the trojan troops the tuscan joins they soon set sail nor now the fates withstand their forces trusted with a foreign hand aeneas leads Upon his stern appear two lions carved, which rising Ida bear, Ida to wandering Trojans ever dear. Under their grateful shade Aeneas sat, revolving war's events and various fate. His left young Pallas kept, fixed to his side, and oft of winds inquired and of the tide, oft of the stars and of their watery way, and what he suffered both by land and sea now sacred sisters open all your spring the tuscan leaders and their army sing which followed great aeneas to the war their arms their numbers and their names declare a thousand youths brave massacus obey born in the tiger through the foaming sea from asium brought and cosa by his care for arms light quivers bows and shafts they bear fierce abbas next his men bright armor wore his stern apollo's golden statue bore six hundred populonia sent along all skilled in martial exercise and strong three hundred more for battle ilva joins an isle renowned for steel and unexhausted mines asilas on his prow the third appears who heaven interprets and the wandering stars from offered entrails prodigies expounds and peals of thunder with presaging sounds a thousand spears in warlike order stand sent by the pisans under his command fair ostor follows in the watery field proud of his managed horse and painted shield gravisca noisome from the neighboring fen and his own Caira sent three hundred men, With those which Minio's fields and Pyrgi gave, All bred in arms unanimous and brave. Thou, muse, the name of Cineras renew, And brave Cupavo followed but by few, Whose helm confessed the lineage of the man, And bore with wings displayed a silver swan. Love was the fault of his famed ancestry, whose forms and fortunes in his ensigns fly for cycnus loved unhappy phaeton and sung his loss in poplar groves alone beneath the sister shades to soothe his grief heaven heard his song and hastened his relief and changed to snowy plumes his hoary hair and winged his flight to chant aloft in air his son cupavo brushed the briny flood upon his stern a brawny centaur stood who heaved a rock and threatening still to throw with lifted hands alarmed the seas below they seemed to fear the formidable sight 
and rolled their billows on to speed his flight ochnus was next who led his native train of hardy warriors through the watery plain the son of manto by the tuscan stream from whence the mantuan town derives the name an ancient city but of mixed descent three several tribes compose the government four towns are under each but all obey the mantuan laws and own the tuscan sway hate to mazentius armed five hundred more whom mincius from his sire benacus bore mincius with wreaths of reeds his forehead covered o'er these grave auletes leads a hundred sweep with stretching oars at once the glassy deep him and his martial train the triton bears high on his poop the sea-green god appears frowning he seems his crooked shell to sound and at the blast the billows dance around a hairy man above the waist he shows a porpoise tail beneath his belly grows and ends a fish his breast the waves divides and froth and foam augment the murmuring tides full thirty ships transport the chosen train for troy's relief and scour the briny main now was the world forsaken by the sun and phoebe half her nightly race had run the careful chief who never closed his eyes himself the rudder holds the sails supplies a choir of nereids meet him on the flood once his own galleys hewn from ida's wood but now as many nymphs the sea they sweep as rode before tall vessels on the deep they know him from afar and in a ring enclose the ship that bore the trojan king Kimodoke, whose voice excelled the rest above the waves advanced her snowy breast her right hand stops the stern her left divides the curling ocean and corrects the tides she spoke for all the choir and thus began with pleasing words to warn the unknowing man sleeps our loved lord o goddess born awake spread every sail pursue your watery track and haste your course your navy once were we from ida's height descending to the sea till turnus as at anchor fixed we stood presumed to violate our holy wood then loosed from shore we fled his fires profane unwillingly we broke our master's chain and since have sought you through the tuscan main the mighty mother changed our forms to these and gave us life immortal in the seas but young ascanius in his camp distressed by your insulting foes is hardly pressed the arcadian horsemen and etrurian host advance in order on the latian coast to cut their way the daunian chief designs before their troops can reach the trojan lines thou when the rosy morn restores the light first arm thy soldiers for the ensuing fight thyself the fated sword of vulcan wield and bear aloft the impenetrable shield to-morrow's sun unless my skill be vain shall see huge heaps of foes in battle slain parting she spoke and with immortal force pushed on the vessel in her watery course for well she knew the way impelled behind the ship flew forward and outstripped the wind the rest make up unknowing of the cause the chief admires their speed and happy omens draws then thus he prayed and fixed on heaven his eyes hear thou great mother of the deities with turrets crowned on ida's holy hill fierce tigers reined and curbed obey thy will firm thy own omens lead us on to fight and let thy phrygians conquer in thy right he said no more and now renewing day had chased the shadows of the night away he charged the soldiers with preventing care their flags to follow and their arms prepare warned of the ensuing fight and bade him hope the war now his lofty poop he viewed below his camp encompassed and the enclosing foe his blazing shield embraced he held on high the camp receive the sign and with loud shouts reply hope arms their courage from their towers they throw their darts with double force and drive the foe 
thus at the signal given the cranes arise before the stormy south and blacken all the skies king turnus wondered at the fight renewed till looking back the trojan fleet he viewed the seas with swelling canvas covered o'er and the swift ships descending on the shore the latians saw from far with dazzled eyes the radiant crest that seemed in flames to rise and dart diffusive fires around the field and the keen glittering of the golden shield thus threatening comets when by night they rise shoot sanguine streams and sadden all the skies so sirius flashing forth sinister lights pale humankind with plagues and with dry famine fright yet turnus with undaunted mind is bent to man the shores and hinder their descent and thus awakes the courage of his friends what you so long have wished kind fortune sends in ardent arms to meet the invading foe you find and find him at advantage now yours is the day you need but only dare your swords will make you masters of the war your sires your sons your houses and your lands and dearest wives are all within your hands be mindful of the race from whence you came and emulate in arms your father's fame now take the time while staggering yet they stand with feet unfirm and prepossess the strand fortune befriends the bold nor more he said but balanced whom to leave and whom to lead then these elects the landing to prevent and those he leaves to keep the city pent meantime the trojan sends his troops ashore some are by boats exposed by bridges more with laboring oars they bear along the strand where the tide languishes and leap a land tarchon observes the coast with careful eyes and where no ford he finds no water fries nor billows with unequal murmurs roar but smoothly slide along and swell the shore that course he steered and thus he gave command here ply your oars and at all hazard land force on the vessel that her keel may wound this hated soil and furrow hostile ground let me securely land i ask no more then sink my ships or shatter on the shore this fiery speech inflames his fearful friends they tug at every oar and every stretcher bends they run their ships aground the vessels knock thus forced ashore and tremble with the shock tarkon's alone was lost that stranded stood stuck on a bank and beaten by the flood she breaks her back the loosened sides give way and plunge the tuscan soldiers in the sea their broken oars and floating planks withstand their passage while they labor to the land and ebbing tides bear back upon the uncertain sand now turnus leads his troops without delay advancing to the margin of the sea the trumpets sound aeneas first assailed the clowns new raised and raw and soon prevailed great theron fell an omen of the fight great theron large of limbs of giant height he first in open field defied the prince but armour scaled with gold was no defence against the fated sword which opened wide his plated shield and pierced his naked side next lycus fell who not like others born was from his wretched mother ripped and torn sacred o phoebus from his birth to thee for his beginning life from biting steel was free not far from him was gaius laid along of monstrous bulk with cisseus fierce and strong vain bulk and strength for when the chief assailed nor valor nor herculean arms availed nor their famed father wont in war to go with great alcides while he toiled below the noisy pharos next received his death aeneas writhed his dart and stopped his bawling breath then wretched Chidon had received his doom, who courted Clytius in his beardless bloom, and sought with lust obscene polluted joys. The Trojan sword had cured his love of boys, had not his seven bold brethren stopped the course of the fierce champions with united force. 
seven darts were thrown at once and some rebound from his bright shield some on his helmet sound the rest had reached him but his mother's care prevented those and turned aside in air the prince then called Achates to supply the spears that knew the way to victory those fatal weapons which inured to blood in grecian bodies under ilium stood not one of those my hand shall toss in vain against our foes on this contended plain he said then seized a mighty spear and threw which winged with fate through maon's buckler flew pierced all the brazen plates and reached his heart he staggered with intolerable smart alcanor saw and reached but reached in vain his helping hand his brother to sustain a second spear which kept the former course from the same hand and sent with equal force his right arm pierced and holding on bereft his use of both and pinioned down his left the numitor from his dead brother drew the illumined spear and at the trojan threw preventing fate directs the lance awry which glancing only marked Achates' thigh in pride of youth the sabine clausus came and from afar to dry ups took his aim the spear flew hissing through the middle space and pierced his throat directed at his face it stopped at once the passage of his wind and the free soul to flitting air resigned his forehead was the first that struck the ground life-blood and life rushed mingled through the wound he slew three brothers of the borean race and three whom ismaras their native place had sent to war but all the sons of thrace halesus next the bold arunki leads the son of neptune to his aid succeeds conspicuous on his horse on either hand these fight to keep and those to win the land with mutual blood the ausonian soil is dyed while on its borders each their claim decide as wintry winds contending in the sky with equal force of lungs their titles try they rage they roar the doubtful rack of heaven stands without motion and the tide undriven each bent to conquer neither side to yield they long suspend the fortune of the field both armies thus perform what courage can foot set to foot and mingled man to man but in another part the arcadian horse with ill success engaged the latin force for where the impetuous torrent rushing down huge craggy stones and rooted trees had thrown they left their coursers and unused to fight on foot were scattered in a shameful flight pallas who with disdain and grief had viewed his foes pursuing and his friends pursued used threatenings mixed with prayers his last resource with these to move their minds with those to fire their force which way companions whether would you run by you yourselves and mighty battles won by my great sire by his established name and early promise of my future fame by my youth emulous of equal right to share his honours shun ignoble flight trust not your feet your hands must hew way through yon black body and that thick array tis through that forward path that we must come there lies our way and that our passage home nor powers above nor destinies below oppress our arms with equal strength we go with mortal hands to meet a mortal foe see on what foot we stand a scanty shore the sea behind our enemies before no passage left unless we swim the main or forcing these the trojan trenches gain this said he strode with eager haste along and bore amidst the thickest of the throng lagus the first he met with fate to foe had heaved a stone of mighty weight to throw stooping the spear descended on his chine just where the bone distinguished either loin it stuck so fast so deeply buried lay that scarce the victor forced the steel away his bond came on but while he moved too slow to wished revenge the prince prevents his blow for warding his at once at once he pressed and plunged the fatal weapon in his breast then lewd ancemolus he laid in dust who stained his stepdam's bed with impious lust and after him the daucian twins were slain laris and thimbrus on the latian plain so wondrous like in feature shape and size as caused an error in their parents eyes grateful mistake but soon the sword decides the nice distinction and their fate divides 
for Thimbra's head was locked and Lar's hand, dismembered sought its owner on the strand. The trembling fingers yet the falchion strain and threaten still the intended stroke in vain. Now to renew the charge the Arcadians came, sight of such acts and sense of honest shame and grief with anger mixed their minds in flame. Then with a casual blow was Rhetus slain, who chanced as Pallas through to cross the plain. The flying spear was after Illus sent, but Rhetus happened on a death unmeant. From Teuthras and from Tyres while he fled, the lance athwart his body laid him dead. Rolled from his chariot with a mortal wound, and intercepted fate he spurned the ground. As when in summer welcome winds arise, the watchful shepherd to the forest flies, and fires the midmost plants, contagion spreads, and catching flames infect the neighboring heads. Around the forest flies the furious blast, and all the leafy nation sinks at last, and Vulcan rides in triumph o'er the waste. The pastor, pleased with his dire victory, beholds the satiate flames in sheets ascend the sky. So palace troops their scattered strength unite, and pouring on their foes their prince delight. Halesus came, fierce with desire of blood, but first collected in his arms he stood. Advancing then he plied the spear so well, Ladon, Demodocus, and Pheres fell. Around his head he tossed his glittering brand, and from Strimonius hewed his better hand, held up to guard his throat, then hurled a stone at Thoas' ample front and pierced the bone. It struck beneath the space of either eye, and blood and mingled brains together fly. Deep skilled in future fates, Halesus' sire did with the youth to lonely groves retire. But when the father's mortal race was run, dire destiny laid hold upon the son and hauled him to the war to find beneath the evandrian spear a memorable death pallas the encounter seeks but ere he throws to tuscan tiber thus addressed his vows o sacred stream direct my flying dart and give to pass the proud halesus heart his arms and spoils thy holy oak shall bear pleased with the bribe the god received his prayer for while his shield protects a friend distressed, the dart came driving on and pierced his breast. But Lausus, no small portion of the war, permits not panic fear to reign too far, caused by the death of so renowned a knight, but by his own example cheers the fight. Fierce Abbas first he slew, Abbas the stay of Trojan hopes and hindrance of the day. The Phrygian troops escaped the Greeks in vain, they and their mixed allies now load the plain to the rude shock of war both armies came their leaders equal and their strength the same the rear so pressed the front they could not wield their angry weapons to dispute the field here pallas urges on and lausus there of equal youth and beauty both appear but both by fate forbid to breathe their native air their congress in the field great jove withstands both doomed to fall but fall by greater hands meantime juturna warns the daunian chief of lausus danger urging swift relief with his driven chariot he divides the crowd and making to his friends thus calls aloud let none presume his needless aid to join retire and clear the field the fight is mine to this right hand is pallas only due O oh, were his father here, my just revenge to view. From the forbidden space his men retired, Pallas their awe and his stern words admired, surveyed him o'er and o'er with wondering sight, struck with his haughty mien and towering height. Then to the king, your empty vaunts forbear, success I hope, and fate I cannot fear. Alive or dead I shall deserve a name, Jove is impartial and to both the same. He said, and to the void advanced his pace. Pale horror sat on each Arcadian face. Then Turnus from his chariot leaping light addressed himself on foot to single fight. And as a lion, when he spies from far a bull that seems to meditate the war, bending his neck and spurning back the sand, runs roaring downward from his hilly stand, imagine eager Turnus not more slow to rush from high on his unequal foe. End of section 19